everybody and welcome to my first After Effects tutorial. Today we'll be making this, which is a muzzle flare, boom, smoke and all, made completely in After Effects with no outside stock footage. This is 100% default After Effects. Boom. So let's jump right into how I did this. The first thing I'm going to want to do is drag in my source footage, in this case footage from a video that I'm releasing fairly shortly drag it in drop it I'm not going to do that because I've already done it and then bring it into the new composition button once into the new composition I will find where I want my muzzle flare to happen we'll say there is a good spot and first we will create a new solid layer Make sure it's the same aspect ratio as your composition. Hit OK. Change the opacity by pressing T to 50%. Grab the masking tool and mask out the shape uh, that you want your muzzle flare to be. A general rule of thumb that I have found is if you are using an assault rifle or anything of that size, make your muzzle flare slightly smaller than your rifle as in the entire size of the rifle and if you're using a pistol make the muzzle flare slightly larger than the size of the pistol so since we are using a rifle we are going to make it slightly smaller than the size of the rifle so just mask out we'll make it kind of random the uh, our muzzle flare bam and then we'll move it over top of where we want it to be eventually now we're going to change the opacity back to 100%. We're going to add the effect fractal noise to our black solid. And it'll look like that. We're going to change the transfer mode of our black solid to add. And that already makes it look a little more muzzle flary. Next, we're going to feather the mask by pressing F and changing the feather, let's try 50. 50 is a slightly too much, let's try 40. That looks about right. Now we're going to add another effect, color correction, curves. We want this thing to pop out a little more, so we're going to change the RGB so that pops out a little more. Bam. Now that's looking more muzzle flary. Next we're going to change the color settings to accurately reflect our muzzle flare. Since it's a flare we need to make it a little more orange. So we'll increase the reds a little. Maybe decrease the green ever so slightly. Decrease the blue ever so slightly. Now, we're going to create a new solid layer, but this time we're going to choose a color relative to our muzzle flare. In this case, it's a pale whitish. I'm going to select the ellipse mask tool from our masking tools above, and we're going to make a mask about yay big. Move it over top of where our muzzle flare will be. Set the opacity to 30% and feather that out a lot. We're going to stick it behind our muzzle flare. Now, muzzle flashes usually only happen at one frame. So we're going to push Alt plus Begin Bracket and Alt plus End Bracket to make it last one frame. We're going to do that for the mask that we just created, as well as the muzzle flare that we created before. Now if we scrub through this, you'll see that, boom, we have a nice flash, a nice little, nice little muzzle flare, boom. But what is a muzzle flare without smoke? A muzzle flare without smoke, that's what it is. So, we're going to create a new solid layer. 
doesn't really matter what the color is, so we can keep it pale yellow if we would like. And we're going to add an effect. Simulate CC Particle World. That'll add this fun little thing to us. We're going to go to Guide and Grids, and we're going to get rid of all of them. And we're going to get rid of the grid as well. It leaves just this. Next, we're going to change the birth rate of our particle world to 0.5. And we're going to change the longevity to 0.2 so that it dies, the par particles die faster. Then we're going to go into the physics of this and change the velocity to 0.5. Next, we're going to change the particle type to a faded sphere. Then we're going to change the birth size to 1.1 we're going to change the colors to a white color and a grayish color right around there probably we're going to change the gravity of this so that our smoke kind of travels upward to negative 0.3 then we're going to change the transfer mode of our particle layer to overlay so that it kind of gives us light, puffy smokeness to it. Next, we're going to create a new null object. Let's rename it by pressing Enter and naming it to Tracker. Double click our source footage. Go to Window, Tracker. Make sure that's enabled. Then we'll come over here and we'll track motion. Now, as you can see, my video is slightly blurry but that's okay because I still think we can find something on here that will work put it on this what we want to do is we want to find a spot in our frame that moves in the background so that we can make our smoke accurately follow the scene so I chose this it's a little big but it should work And it did. Sweet. So we'll push apply. X and Y, yes. And now all of our tracking data is applied to this tracking layer. Now for our smoke, let's move it over by our gun. Hit Alt end bracket. Move over about five frames. Actually, we'll do seven for this one. Push Alt end bracket. Go back to where our smoke starts and parent this smoke object to the tracker. Now, if we scrub through, can't see it too clearly, but our smoke should follow the scene. Cool. Now we're going to hit T and go to the opacity settings for our smoke. Click to set a keyframe, go to the end of our seven frame layer and change it to zero. That way our, our, our fog dissipates over time. Now to make this more prominent, we'll duplicate this layer. And if we scrub through it, you'll see that we have a pretty decent looking smoke slash muzzle flare shot. If the smoke lasts too long, like this one slightly does, then just trim your smoke layers down a couple frames. Change and move the opacity over so it still cuts out at the end of the layer. And there you have it. There's a muzzle flare without using anything from Action Essentials or Andrew Kramer or NC Cinema or anything like that. This tutorial was fairly easy. If you liked this content, please subscribe as I'll be making more tutorials in the future. Also, if you haven't had a chance, go check out one of our other videos, which I will post on the video here. 
So once again, thanks for watching. If you make a muzzle flare using my tutorial, post it in the comments section below as a video response. I want to see what they look like. Alright guys, until next time.